The programs that were used to create this video are Camtasia Studio 5 and Microsoft Windows Movie Maker. Hello and welcome to the XNA series. We are currently doing tutorials on Paddles, a Pong clone, and we are at section 3 of the text tutorial. And section 3, what we're going to do is go into the coding, so that's why I do not have the text tutorial in the video, because all we're going to be doing now is coding. So before we actually do some coding, we need to go over the basics of the basic aim engine that Microsoft provides when we start a new project. So if we start C Sharp 2005 Express, or what you use to run XNA, new project, XNA, I'm going to do Windows Game 2.0 and Paddles Tutorial. Once that's created, we will have Game1.cs open, and that's our basic game engine for our game. And if we press F5 right away, we will have a window. So if you're following the text tutorial, I just copied and pasted this code and I didn't really discuss much about it because it's very well commented. You can see all these comments that Microsoft provides for you and it'll get you started. There's really nothing more in depth you need to go other than these comments. But for basic introduction you put the initialize code in the initialize method load content like your sprite batch and all your textures in your load content your sprite fonts to load fonts and stuff like that unload content it's like load content but you unload all that stuff update where you move your sprite and update your timing and stuff like that and draw is where you actually draw your sprite clear the game window, draw your sprite, draw everything else required to view for the game. Now let's take a look at the solution explorer. We have a few files here. Uh, program.cs holds the entry point of the program. It uses the main method like every product that you create will have regardless if it's a game or program or something like that everything requires a main method and that's what program.cs has and now we're using a new game and we call the game constructor and now we run that game and that game will run until we press a button or click the red X at the top right and then our program will be done game thumbnail that's what will appear in the package you can we'll discuss that in tutorial 9 10 or 11 depending on how much we'll get in on the tutorials that will be in a excellent creators club package that you can send to excellent creators club members and for this tutorial we'll keep the default game thumbnail and we'll discuss how to create other thumbnails in the next game. Game1.cs, that is where we just looked at, is the basic game engine for our program. It inherits Microsoft.xna.framework.game. Uh, Game.ico, that is the icon on the top left of the window, like you see in Paint, we have a brush here at the top left that's what the icon will appear in our game if we press F5 we will see that gamepad icon so again for this game we'll leave the basic icons but next game we may we will do a new game thumbnail we may not get to do a game.ico Now, content, this is a project, a sub-project in a project, but it's really a folder on your computer that you can 
put all of your content like sprites, fonts, stuff like that inside there. Sounds, music, stuff like that. Everything the game can need goes in the content project. And the references, you should know that by using C Sharp a while. Some of the info, you do not need to edit this, but you can if you want. Now, I open up the text tutorial for this part because it's a graphic that we need to look at. And we need to do some modifications to the Solution Explorer in our project before we start coding. Oh, we need to create a few files and a few more projects a few files and a few more folders for our project and the only folders we'll need to create is the screens folder and the objects folder because we the others we already have created already so if we look at the bottom graphic this is what we need the root project that's what we created we need to create a file called text.cs and keyboard.cs in no other folder. In the content folder we need to add a single pixel.png. Inside a game objects folder we need paddle.cs and ball.cs. In a game screens folder we need a screen manager, menu screen, game screen. And I forgot to take out the pause screen I scratched that because you don't need to worry about pausing right now in your game. So just create a screen manager, menu screen, and game screen. No pause screen. Okay, once all those files are added to your project, we need to quickly change all the classes to public class instead of just class. So go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. Now, our screen manager is going to be our new game engines, so to speak. It's going to handle what screens are active, what screens can draw, what screens can update, and what sort of input to pass on to which screen. But we will need some basic stuff that the easiest way to do it is to get it from game1.cs. So, underneath the sprite batch creation line, we want a public static content manager content and inside the game one change the uppercase content to lowercase content and we also need to and above that as content is equal to new content manager and we need to pass it services and that's all we need to get started so Instead of quitting now and going on to the next section, I'm going to combine section 4 in this tutorial as well because section 4 is a long section. We'll need to split it up into multiple tutorials. Okay, so section 4. Okay, the topic of this section is screens, and we need to discuss why they're important before we go into the coding. And it'll be the very first thing we do in our program besides the content we just created here. And we do not want to start with the gameplay first because if we do that we'll have to modify our screen manager. And then once we make sure the gameplay works.